No matter a person's station in life, we all deserve high-level foot care. Check this out. Pretty good infection you have here, man. Huh? It's a pretty good infection you have here. It could get infected. You well, yeah, it looks like you have a fungal infection here. Oh, fungal infection. Fungus. Yeah, fungus. As you can tell, this patient has some hearing loss. In situations like this, I try not to engage the patient too much in conversation because it can get frustrating for them. Until a few weeks prior to this recording, this patient was homeless for some time. He was in and out of shelters until he decided to no longer go back to a shelter because other residents would steal his belongings. This is a common issue in the homeless system where residents would rather live on the street than stay in the shelter because of the issues of theft. You may be wondering how a person who was homeless or recently homeless able to go to a doctor's office, a private office, for health care. You would be surprised that many homeless people have health insurance, including Medicare and Medicaid, like this patient. They may have some limited income through Social Security or other means, but it's not enough to maintain a household and themselves. So they end up in a homeless situation, whether they end up with family members, friends, the kindness of strangers, or end up in the homeless system where some of them lose faith in the homeless system and end up on the street. This gentleman has a cell phone. He has belongings that he was able to recover and keep with himself. But the picture of the homeless needs to really be understood. It's not just vagrancy. It's not just people who have given up on life, but there are folks who have had circumstances often beyond their control to lead them into this situation. And yes, they've been able to maintain some things that will help them uh, get through the day to stay in contact with those they need to stay in contact with and to be able to seek health care, including health insurance, including cell phones, including bank accounts, and many live out of vehicles, but they scrape by any way they can. Now, don't think that every homeless person has this problem with their toenails. Yes, the homeless have issues with hygiene, being able to find places to clean themselves. They also have issues with shoes and being able to have multiple pairs of shoes in order to rotate them and to clean them so they can avoid these type of issues. I've seen patients who were homeless for many years, living on the streets and had either very mild fungal infections or had no fungal infections at all. Then I've seen professionals, uh, teachers, doctors, firemen, police officers, who are doing very well, live in great homes, have great family support and all that other kind of good stuff. And their toenails could look exactly like this. So there is no profile really of how this can happen. But clearly in this gentleman's uh, case, not being able to have good foot hygiene on a regular basis has definitely contributed to his toenail fungal issue. When I see fungal toenail infections that are this far advanced, I make sure that I remove as much of the nail and the nail debris as possible and make sure that I do so comfortably for the patient. I use a curette to loosen and remove the fungal debris from the surface and the nail folds and the ends of the toenails. This is very important because fungus tends to live deeply in these areas. 
and they need to be removed so that the fungal infection can be cured and the medication that this patient will eventually end up on will have less to work against. Sometimes these fungal toenails will have the consistency of tree bark, especially before they're soaked in the footpath. They're hard, brittle, and dark, and flake off very easily. Fortunately, I can soak my patients in a foot bath so that trimming these types of nails is much more comfortable for them. As the nail is being filed, you can see that there is clean, normal looking nail underneath. It's pretty amazing how this happens sometimes. If we get to the surface, very diseased looking nail and start to trim it away and file it away and keep it clean, that gives us a better idea of the ability of this issue to be cured. Most fungal infections take place underneath the nail, so it's important to clear as much of that nail bed of debris and infected nail as possible. He's got a good start here, but that's not all. I collected some of the nail samples and sent them to the lab. The lab will look at them under the microscope and use DNA testing to identify the organisms so that the proper treatment plan can be determined. Skin care of the feet is also very important, especially in this population. So for him to take home, I gave him some lotion to moisturize his feet and some vitamin A and D ointment to further nourish the feet and also to protect them from the elements. Foot powder is used between the toes to maintain dryness and to prevent spread of the infection between the toes and causing an athlete's foot. I have learned over the years that understanding the patient's complete situation makes it much more valuable for me to help determine what's going on That's with it. them That's and it. the best way for me to help them. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Share it with your family and friends. If you leave a comment or a question, it may be featured in a future video. But most importantly, take care of your feet.